Hmm, how does one do this? Probably not like that. Hello, people of the future! I'm back, and today I am channeling my inner vintage, because I'm just so darn excited. In fact, I am aggressively happy, because after 671 days of staring at it, I have finally decided to open up my 1962 reproduction Barbie dream house. Ain't she a beaut? But what is a reproduction, Jen? It's basically a modern day re-release by a brand of a once popular product. So I actually had this since November of 2018 when I bought it off of Amazon for around $71 Canadian. Unfortunately, I can't tell you how much that's gonna cost in a US dollar amount because it's no longer available on Amazon. But if you go to the Mattel website, they do have it listed for $100, which I assume is US. But unfortunately, the little tab that says click here to find a retailer isn't highlighted. So I'm not sure if that means that no one's selling it right now or if they're just sold out or whatever it may be and sadly that's all the info I have right now unless you're trying to buy it off of eBay which I did not look into at all for pricing. When we open this up we're gonna get a doll, a doll stand, a certificate of authenticity and a whole bunch of furniture that we'll assemble ourselves. The year is 1962 and Barbie has moved into her swell new dream house. This vintage reproduction is a replica of the original right down to the furniture and decorative accessories. The custom designed mid-century modern decor includes a hi-fi stereo and self-assembled slimline furniture. Barbie is included too, and she's ready to entertain friends or spend a quiet evening relaxing in her living room. Fold the walls, and the house neatly stores the furnishings and becomes a portable carry case for on-the-go fun. Three, two, one. Wow, it's either the front or back door. Here is our carry case. It's a mix of greens, turquoise, dark blues, and white. There's a thick black plastic handle on top, and I'm assuming this side is the front because not only is there a door, but there are also two metal clasps and they'll allow us to open. Okay, I'm wrong. It's not the front. It was the back. Shh. All right, check it out. Ooh. I didn't expect it to fold out so big. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, I need more room. You guys can't see nothing. That looks much better for you. So let's continue on and open out the first wall, which is gonna click right into this little plastic jibber that they've got. Whoop, whoop, oh, dropping stuff. My cardboard furniture has fallen forward. It's an empty box. And this one is also empty, but comes with some little gray plastic jibbers. This one here is gonna have our Barbie doll. And lastly, we have some more furniture, which we'll need to assemble. Our walls are bright yellow, and on this side we have framed plants, as well as an orange double-doored closet. The back wall is white and yellow with one window, and the curtains start in the middle and are striped with pink and white, and we can see some plants outside. The third wall is also yellow, and we have two flags on the wall that say state. One is white and black, and the other is pink and black. We also have three windows, with plaid curtains, which are orange, red, pink, blue, and green. And then there's just a bit more foliage outside. The flooring is a white tile with a yellow oval rug, and there's also a large red rectangular area rug with a print on it that makes it seem as though it's textured. And that, my friends, is it. Which is perfect, because now we can start building our accessories and furniture. Unless you don't build accessories. It depends on what they are. So I do have two packages and it seems as though they each have five boards in them. And each of those boards contains pop-out pieces for us to create our stuff. So far, this is my first piece of plastic waste. It looks like I've got some instructions here and they tell you to check off each step as you complete it. And they also give you a really easy guide to make sure you understand what things are what. For example, this is a slot. This is a notch. These are tabs. And this is a hole. Makes it super easy. She says as she looks at the mini Ikea book. Mm. I can't wait. So I'm gonna be starting with my bed, but since the pieces are kind of scattered among the different boards, I'm gonna have to do a little searching. Oh, there's a bed piece. Looks like I gotta open the second one. This side also has my certificate of authenticity. My second piece of plastic waste. Couch, ottoman, mirror. Luckily everything is labeled. That's a wardrobe. Wardrobe, wardrobe, wardrobe. More wardrobes. Wardrobe, wardrobe, bed. Okay, it took some work, but I have four pieces of my bed. One, two, three, four, five. What the crap? Oh no, <laughs> turns out I'm missing one, hold on. Now, I have five pieces and I'm ready to assemble. There's some very detailed instructions here, which is excellent. There you go, guys, we have a bed. Let's move on to the rest of the furniture. We've got a blue rectangular ottoman with four small wooden legs. 
Here's our vanity chair. It's pink with sloped back and sides and has four long wooden legs. Here are two sets of books. We've got a little coffee table. How cool is that? Wait for it. Oh, there's a record player inside. Moving on to chairs. And this one's all blue with wooden legs. Playing stack the furniture over here. There's my couch. It's a mix of red, blue, and green plaid and has wooden legs. There you go, we have a brownish yellow lamp. I'm gonna put these things off to the side and get started on my wardrobe, which by the way is like 50 billion pieces. Luckily they are all alphabetized, so they go in order. How the heck are you gonna start with B? Okay, I can't find a dowel, so I'm assuming it's gotta be in the doll box, so I'm gonna have to open it. Oh, she's so pretty, ah, I'm dropping stuff. Okay, we'll check her out a bit better soon because I see the dowel. It's taped on the back of the box. And back to building. Ooh, oh wait, it'll be like this. Ooh, nope, nope, nope. It'll be like this, ooh. <laughs> All right, I finished building the wardrobe, but before it's completely assembled, it needs to be added to the dream house and attached from there, which means I need to grow a bit and uh, change the camera. I am topside once more, and now it's time to attach my wardrobe to the back wall using those little plastic jibbers. Whoop, they're flying away. That's one, and that's two. And then we're gonna need two more on either side. Now all I have to do is fold down the tops and call it a day. I thought it would be a little bit more snug to the sides, but oh well. Now we can add our mirror to the center vanity. We have a sliding door panel so we can put shoes and stuff. We've got that dowel that I found so that we can hang our six red hangers. And they're really realistic. They've even got the little hooks on the sides to hold dresses. And now we gotta add our creepy photo of Ken. He looks kind of demonic. But if Barbie doesn't care, then why should I? Does he fit there? No! So I'm gonna put in my hi-fi. We'll put Ken on there. Throw in our couch and our coffee table. Of course, we're gonna need a bed, but I'm gonna put it this way. Here's our vanity seat. Throw a little pillow on there. Some pillows on the bed. Add our chair and ottoman. And Barbie's a pretty smart chick, so she's gonna need some books. And you can't read if you don't have lighting, so we'll need to give her a lamp. And they've also given us two more triangle flags. These ones are blue and they say state in yellow. I'll put one there. But because I wanna stick one to the wall, but don't wanna commit to its location, I'm gonna attach a little bit of painter's tape so I can move it whenever I want without worrying about damaging anything. And lastly, I have six different records. We've got Recipe for Instant Love. I'm just gonna put them on the bed. Six terrific teenage tunes sung by Barbie and Ken. The Busy Buzz, sung by Barbie and Ken. My First Date, sung by Barbie and Ken. Nobody Taught Me, by Barbie and Ken. And lastly, Barbie and Ken. You know, their relationship would be super cute if you completely ignored the fact that they're based off of real life siblings. So I finished decorating my entire beautiful dream house. And the best part is whenever you're done using it or no longer having it on display, all you have to do is fold everything in on itself and you don't have to worry about disassembling anything. And since I don't have Barbie out yet so that I can add her to her house, it means I'm gonna have to test that out right now, which it just dawns on me, means that I spent all this time setting it up for no reason. Hmm, how does one do this? Probably not like that. Viola. She's sealed, except I didn't seal it. Excellent. The house is packed up and now we can move on to our Barbie. Although we've technically already opened it and quickly saw it, we didn't unbox it fully. Wow, look at this box that we've never checked out yet. Inside, we get a clear plastic stand and another plastic bag. I think my tally is at four or five now if you count the little jibber bag. We also get a round black base that says Barbie. That's gonna click right into that. And a clear plastic waist hugger, not a face hugger. And that's what's gonna hold on to Barbie so that she can stand because of course she cannot stand unassisted. And now, Barbie herself. Dude, okay. Barbie, take a look at the cameras. Wow, she's gorgeous. Holy smokes, she's got a metal zipper. And it zips. 
These are like real life people clothes. All right, so we're gonna switch down to the top down so that you can see this doll a little bit better. But first I just wanted to let you know the vintage reproduction and silk stone dolls are my absolute favorite of the Barbie looks. It's just too bad there isn't an option to get the dream house with a black haired version or a brunette. And before you say that you don't think that's possible because you don't think that's the Barbie that would have come with the dream house, if memory serves me correct, the original didn't come with a Barbie. I'm pretty sure you had to buy that separately, which means there's absolutely no reason why I can't have a mini me in Barbie form, except that it didn't come with one. Here's a close up of our reproduction blonde ponytailed Barbie from the 60s. And as that description suggests, she does have a tight blonde high ponytail with the signature Barbie curl in the back, and in the front she has tightly curled bangs just like the original teenage fashion model. Her hair is held together really nicely and I don't think I'd be able to recreate it if I were to take it out, but a quick peek through the top tells me that her head is in fact bald other than what we can see in what I assume is only an outer row of rooting, which is most likely how they're able to get such a smooth tight ponytail without bumps. And based on my quick assessment of the doll having bright red lips and nail polish and what feels like a hollow body, I'm thinking this is a reproduction of the number five ponytail Barbie dolls which came out around 1961, but I could be wrong. Moving on to Barbie's face and makeup, she does have that vintage silhouette with deep inset eyes which from a side profile looks so so creepy but facing forward just looks so delicate, vintage and beautiful. She's got light brown eyebrows, bright blue eyes with light blue makeup and dark eyeliner, a fine pointed nose, light blushing on her cheeks, and bright red lips. And she also comes wearing two pearl earrings. The doll comes wearing a knee length floral print sheathed dress which has four round gold buttons and two real pockets in the front with a silver metal zipper in the back. And look, it works! The quality is fantastic, it's got great stitching, it's thick and starchy, and overall it's a wonderful reproduction of the 1964 on-the-go fashion pack dress, which would have fit both Barbie and Midge. It even comes with the petite red sandals, which are currently secured with an elastic band, but we can easily take those off. Before we redress her, we'll quickly check out her body. She has movement in both the shoulders and at the hips. She does have that pointed bust, a pretty voluptuous bottom, a hollow body, and funny enough, no knees. But she does have bright red polish on both her hands and feet. And now we can put her clothes back on. So now we're gonna have to set up the house again so that we can see what she looks like in it. As a size comparison, she is pretty tall. Even if you think about the lowest ceiling, which I'm pretty sure is like nine feet, unless you're in a basement, this would make Barbie insanely, insanely tall. Talk about not proportionate, am I right? Now I'm gonna try to switch up the room again. And while I do it, I'm just gonna give you my final overall thoughts. The cardboard is nice and thick and really brightly printed, which in the end results in a really nice quality. One thing that was a little annoying was that all the pieces for the furniture were scattered across 10 different pieces of cardboard. Although I do understand that it was to maximize the space so they didn't have to use more. And to be fair, you could go ahead and punch out all those pieces and it would probably make your life a lot easier. I wish it was a made to move Barbie. I know it wouldn't make sense for the time, but then you can cross her legs and she doesn't have to be quite so stiff. Because right now, she'd be resting her feet on the table. What kind of record do you want to listen to, Barbie? One that's sung by you and Ken, or another that's sung by you and Ken? Okay guys, that is the end of my 1962 Barbie reproduction dream house review, and I swear to you I did not know that was going to rhyme, but it is a great, great win. All the hairspray and mousse that is super tight to my head is giving me a massive headache. It's falling flat and also starting to frizz, which naturally means that I'm done because I don't want to look like a super fool. I already look like a relatively okay looking cutish weird fool. <laughs> Anyways, here is my first reproduction Barbie that I've ever taken out of the package. I do have more and I posted on my Instagram asking if you guys think I should open them and a lot of you said don't do it and a lot of you said do do it. Instead I decided to open this one. The real question is how can I show it off all the time without it getting ruined or super dusty? Would it be really weird to just create a coffee table that is all plexiglass? so that I could set it up and you see everything inside? Maybe. <laughs> but I kind of want to do it because why wouldn't you? I don't know, but whatever. I'm gonna set her to the side so I don't accidentally hit her because I've been known to do such things. And yeah, if you know somebody who would enjoy this video, then please share it with them. And if you enjoyed it yourself, then please make sure you remember to comment, like, and subscribe. You can let me know down below everything you liked or didn't like. And if you bought this Barbie Dreamhouse reproduction or if you had the original because, you know, audience, 
vast ages, love you all, didn't come with a Barbie. Because I'm interested to know whether or not I just made that fact up in my head. Anyways, as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!